yet the valley shall be filled with water, and ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. And by the way, says the Lord in the next verse, this is only a light thing for the Lord. This is nothing for me. In fact, I will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. I will not only give you water, I will give you your enemies into your hands as well. Now, we have trouble sometimes figuring out how God's going to pay his bills, how he's going to finish the work. and everything. You know what? This is a light thing for the Lord. Paying our bills is something he does without even thinking because it's already dead. By the way, does God keep his promises? No. I fooled you. We go to him, Lord, you promise, please keep your promise. You know what? We don't even understand God. When he speaks, it's already a done deal. God doesn't say, let there be light. And a year later, there was light. The moment God speaks, it exists. It's history. When God says in the Bible, my, Paul said, my God will provide for all of your needs according to his riches and glories, Philippians 4, 19. It is already a done deal. Does God have to keep his promise? No, he's already done it. He doesn't have to come back and say, well, I guess I did promise you. I guess I better do what I promised. He doesn't do that. He said, the moment I promised it, I made provision for it already. I don't have to come back and do it. It's already done. See, I fooled you, right? God doesn't have to keep his promises because he's already done it. So God already made provision for your needs. The moment you ask, it's already been done in the past. Don't go beg God to keep his word. He's already kept it. Just ask and thank. He says, do not worry about anything, but in all things by supplication and prayer with thanksgiving. Make your request known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Why? The great peace to know it's already taken care of. That's really hard for us humans, especially when he says, go dig ditches. You won't see wind, no storms. You won't see rain, nothing out of the sky. But tomorrow, all your ditches will be filled with water. And it's hard to dig ditches when you're thirsty. Wiping that life from your brow, and you keep digging ditches. And some soldiers probably dug some little, little ditches about a foot deep. Other soldiers, probably Jehoshaphat's soldiers, said, Dig deep ditches that Jehovah said, and the God of Elisha will keep his word. Dig deep. And so they dug, and they sweat, and they were thirsty and miserable. But something told them, God never lies, just dig. Ahab's, Ahab's sons, troops, probably dug little, little ditches. You know, I mean, uh, what, what is the God that they served? Baal, right? Did you know that Baal is, was the God of rain? Did you know that? Yeah, he was the God of rain. And God said, there won't be any rain tomorrow. So why should I dig my ditches? If my God is not going to give me water, it's the God of, of, of Jehoshaphat that's going to give water. But their God, Baal, he wasn't going to give them any water because it's not going to rain. So they're digging little ditches. We don't want to sweat. I mean, let's preserve our, our liquid, right? We don't want to get too dehydrated. We might die tomorrow. But all of Jehoshaphat's soldiers are digging deep. And the next morning, and it came to pass, verse 20, in the morning about the meat offering was offered. I mean, they're, they're, actually, they're actually in the middle of a worship service. They're thanking the God of heaven at the meat offering. They're doing their, their, their morning devotions. The, the priests are doing this and they're thanking the Lord. And it says about that time that behold, there came water by the way of Edom and the country was filled with water. God opened up a dam. The, he had the, mount, the water piled up in the mountains and suddenly God removed the dam and this water just swept across the valleys and disappeared. And lo and behold, all the ditches were filled with water. Now, how much water did the little ditches have? <laughs> There's all of Ahab's troops. Huh, a couple of cups. And all Jehoshaphats are diving into the pool. <laughs> Everybody had water according to their faith, be it unto you, right? God is telling his people today, dig deep ditches. Commit yourself. 
take on projects. Assume liabilities, not for yourself, in favor of God's work. Risk everything because the God, your God that asked you to do that is going to fill that ditch with water. If you dig little ditches, that's how much water you're going to get. If you assume big liabilities for God and take on big projects in obedience to his word because you have a great God, God will do great things for you. And that's what he promised to do. This morning he got Pastor Sam up and said, dig some big ditches. Come on. Well, how about this ditch? Is that as little as you can think? Well, how about a $20 million ditch? What? You think that's all I am? Now, I, in worship this morning, I told the story, but I want to tell it to you again. King Alexander the Great used to love to give gifts to his people. Once a year, we are told, he would gather his court together and he would have a special man who would go back and forth and all his citizens in his kingdoms were allowed to come and ask him favors. One man would come up and tell his assistant, I need clothes for my family. The assistant would run to the king, whisper in his ear. The king would say, granted! And he would get clothes. Next, I have a sick wife, needs medicines. He, he would run to the king, whisper in the king's ear. And the king would say, smile and say, granted! And this went on for hours and hours and hours, every year. One day this man stood up and he said, what do you want to ask from the king? I want a large castle. <laughs> Plenty of tables and servants and food piled up and I want to invite all my friends and I want to be able to throw a banquet. You can't ask that. What are you thinking? And the king, the king is saying, what are you talking about over there? No, no, king, no, 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 no never mind. I want to know, said the king. So the man came up and said, you won't believe it, king. The man wants you to give him a castle with plenty of servants and tables and food. The king smiled real big and said, granted, this is the first man that has ever treated me like a king. He's asked me something that only a king can give. Are you understanding? Lord, please help me today so that I won't have an accident on the way to work. <laughs> I have a sore throat. Please help me. Of course we should talk to God about everything. But sometimes we limit our request to little nothings. And God is saying, don't you believe I'm the king? Ask me something. More. Not for yourself. Ask it because you know that I want souls. And if you ask for souls, I will say, granted. How many souls do you want? Lord, just give me one. What? <laughs> give me a hundred. Bigger. Give me a thousand. There's a lot of people in the world. Think bigger. How about ten million? Now we're talking. Granted. Are you understanding the size of God's vision? What about Penrith? Huh? Why don't you just take all of Sydney while you're at it? Take it all. You're thinking too little. Why don't you ask for the whole continent? Ask for all of Australia. And while you're at it, throw in all the other islands too. <laughs> you don't have to ask for South America. That's a little, that's a little, and somebody else, is, somebody else can ask for that. But at least ask for your own homeland. Amen. Isn't that fair enough? Amen. How many people does it take to conquer? How about... Jonathan and his armor bearer, just two. If two of you have the faith to ask God for it, God just might give it to two of you. And if only one of you want it, he might just give it to only one of you. But if that's what you ask for, why would God say no? Would he say no to you? <laughs> no, I think, I think you're asking too big. Who do you think I am anyhow that I'm going to give you that many souls? God's not going to do that. God is going to smile real big and say, finally, somebody who treats me like a king. Dig ditches. That's the hard part. You're thirsty. You don't know how you can go on. You got bills to pay. 
You're already overdue on your bills. You've already as assumed liabilities. You're deep into your, 